1980s now. Hey, welcome back to another episode of 1980s now, a weekly examination of the importance of 1980s pop culture and its influence today. Hey, my name is Will, and joining me as always are my friends and co-hosts, Kat and John. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello, guys. Hey there, friends and co-hosts. <laughs> hello. Both. And hello yeah. to everybody that's watching us right now as we live stream yes. on YouTube Hi. and Facebook as we record mm-hmm. this uh, episode. I see Karen and Miss So and Brandon and Darth and Al and everybody's got a code name, it seems like, right? Oh, I mean, yes. There are code names <laughs> out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Brandon. Brandon is not a code name. And Brandon. Brandon is not that's right. And Brandon. Code names or, and Brandon. Is it? We don't Ooh. know. If you are watching us live right now, say hello in the comments because otherwise we don't know you're there. It doesn't let us know. Right. (laughs) Right. And I was going to make a segue just now about speaking of people that that no one knows is there, uh, visit John at Gen X Grown Up. (laughs) But it's so wrong because with nearly 50,000 followers on uh, subscribers on YouTube, (laughs) Mm, nearly lots of people know he's there and like what he's doing and you should check it out as well. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey, on uh, today's show, we're going to be discussing some of the films released during what I believe is the best year for movies, mm-hmm. 1984. And I've done the math. Oh. Each of those is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Oh. Uh-huh. Good math. Good job. <laughs> back, back in my day, we had good movies. Oh. <laughs> and it's probably no coincidence that in the movie theaters we've got a couple of 1984. You know, I guess we, we should have. We have a couple of sequels to 1984 films that are premiering. Mm-hmm. There's one of the theaters we just okay. had, and one that's coming up streaming. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give you. I'm just going to tease this for you guys right now. I worked oh. really. Well, I, I, I won't give you the results, but I worked really hard at trying to statistically prove, objectively prove, mm-hmm. that 1984 is the best year for movies. I won't tell you mm. what I found out yet, but uh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. I did the Ever? work. Okay. I, the work. I don't think it's such an uphill battle. It's a pretty easy argument to make when you start looking across the board. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, did you find that really not just, to be the case? No, we'll see. Well, we'll see. anecdotally, subjectively, I agree with you. But when someone says to you, mm-hmm. I think 82 is a better year, for example, or 2002 for that matter, mm. then it's, right. it's, you know, you want to remove it from the realm of our just sort of subjective arguments to be able to say, that's fine, but look at this. Spreadsheet. Uh-huh. <laughs> Look at the numbers. Oh, there's a spreadsheet involved. Hey, before we do that, though, we're going to review current news stories uh, related to 1980s media, including mm-hmm. we've got some, speaking of stats, we've got some stats with regard to the Roadhouse reboot. Uh, if you mm-hmm. remember, we just talked about it last week, mm-hmm. and at the time I said, well, we don't have any numbers yet, so we're not really sure how successful they were. We certainly don't have a box office that we could use to compare to the old film. But mm-hmm. we do have some numbers from Netflix uh, or, or Amazon, rather, now. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Smith directed a movie set in 1986, or he's set to direct it. Kevin Smith is about to direct a movie set in 1986. I'll tell you mm-hmm. what that's all about. The 1984 Scorpion uh, hit song, Rock You Like a Hurricane, uh, was nearly <laughs> R-rated. We'll uh, talk about that. Uh-huh. And a streamer has just added 20 films from 1984 to their catalog. There you go. <laughs> So there's a they place know. you can they watch them. Yeah. yeah. If you're subscribing, they, you can watch them there. They looked at your spreadsheet, no doubt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, maybe. Was it? I'll talk about yeah. What it was, yeah. Will did all this research. He mm-hmm. impacted the Google Analytics so that when they yes. went to look, like, oh, there's so much search on these movies, we'd better yeah. add them to the streaming. You directly <laughs> impacted it with your research. Well. Yeah. So the problem, yeah. is, maybe, I, mean, I might explain it, John, because their list is quite eccentric and eclectic. Let's say eclectic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. More yeah. eclectic, less eccentric. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's so many films that are absent. I'm sure it's licensing issues, but... Not comprehensive, maybe, yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe it was because mm-hmm. of this weird way I was searching. Because I was looking up some obscure movies from 84 and some lesser mm-hmm. popular ones, uh, just so we could talk about it later. All right. Mm-hmm. Hey, before we get going, though, officially, I've got a couple of announcements. One, hey, last week, if you listened, I did play a promo for our new friends over at the Children of the 80s it's a podcast that uh, began in 2023 and i just found out about them i'm trying to do a better job of listening to other shows and Mm -hmm. uh, seeing what other folks are doing in our space and i uh, Mm -hmm. certainly invite you to check out jim and Lindsay. they are a husband and wife a husband and wife couple both (laughs) i mean 
<laughs> and other redundant things. Uh, but so much wait, like us, the, they are husband yeah. and wife, and they're doing yes. a podcast, mm -hmm. and they're still a husband and wife. I oh. wanted to ask you guys that. Yeah, thinking about Jim and Lindsay, <laughs> do you think uh, either of you? Do you think you could do a podcast about any subject? One that would be appropriate Ooh. with your spouse and still, you know, be productive and mm. get beyond the first few episodes. <laughs> mm. Hmm. There would be a few episodes. I don't know how yeah. many. <laughs> Before they called it off. <laughs> like, yeah. Before you ran out of stuff to anymore. say. We're like, look, it's this oh. show or our marriage. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I got a good name for Kat's uh, podcast for the oh. husband. Oh. You're still oh. here? <laughs> <laughs> but who's saying that? Which of the two is actually, or is both? Ooh, there's Depending the on the episode. To decide. Yeah. John, you think you could do a podcast with your spouse? No, no, no. She'd never go for it, and it would be too. <laughs> I'm too much of a control freak that it would drive her even more bananas than I already do. So that'd be out. Yeah. Even if it's yeah. just about Star Trek, that wouldn't yeah. work. Oh, mm. she'd talk about it, but if I mm -hmm. no, 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 check your levels. No, no, no. Get your camera right. Oh, I'm That's out. It. I'm out. Just ridiculous. <laughs> yes. It's right. like you said this is going to be fun. I'm like, well, it's fun for me. But... <laughs> I hear that a lot, actually, at my house. Anyway, that's... Oh, you know, no. Yeah. You said Sorry. this was going to well, be fun. You well, hear Jim, that Fun for me. <laughs> fun for me. <laughs> well, Jim and Lindsay are still together after wow. all these episodes. Good for them. Uh, chatting Very about, nice. uh, you know, 1980s pop culture like we do, music, movies, commercials, mm. TV, all mm. that sort of thing. But they're a married couple and they have a different perspective. So if you like what we talk about here, you may like them. Check them out. Children of the 80s. And hey, one more announcement. Speaking of 1984 films, listen uh, later this week for my interview with Lucinda Dickey. Yes, that Lucinda Dickey. Lucinda Dickey played Kelly in both Breakin movies. Uh -huh. And she also was the star of Ninja 3, The Domination. Oh, my gosh. And I just watched that for the first time. <laughs> it's ever. fantastic, isn't it? It's, it's wow. every, every movie trope <laughs> you could think of from the 80s, they stuck in this movie, John. Yeah. Everything. It, it's everything. Everything you don't want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> and well, what's really cool is, you know, so Lucinda, I can't think of anybody else that's done this. She was in three movies that came out in 1984. Now, that might be a feat that other folks yeah. have done. But hmm. one of those films was a sequel to the another that came out six months earlier. I don't I don't think that's ever been done. It's just that's nuts. that deserves anyway. a special award. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to chat with her about how she got involved in, in the movies in the first place. Uh, and uh, came to do these roles and some of her experiences uh, behind the scenes there, or, but you know, while she worked on these films. And, mm -hmm. and uh, spoiler alert, you, you may know this because you haven't seen her in any films lately. After she did these three movies, she did one more and she was done. Done with Hollywood. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Maybe she had lived yeah. enough of the Hollywood life by then, you know. She had three mm -hmm. films in Just, one movie. She's like, all right, I got it. <laughs> Just like a podcast with your spouse. She's had enough. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> in three, yes. All right, hey. I've had enough. <laughs> Uh, let's get caught up on 1980s news. Because I want to talk about movies. Oh, I know you love to talk about movies. I'll oh, see. We're already getting challenged. Darth says, sorry, mm. 1989 was the best year for movies. See, this is what I'm talking about, John. Like, what do I say? No. No. Well, first of all, he's not sorry. <laughs> hmm. Good point. <laughs> uh... Alice says, spreadsheet, John is in heaven. Oh, yeah, we know you love your <laughs> spreadsheets, John. Well, John loves to be organized. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Uh, and uh, John in the chat here says, hey, folks, Special K is the best. And if you know who Special K is, then you're going to want to listen to our chat with Lucinda mm -hmm. Dickey later this week. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, this week in 1980s news, as reported by the Lad Bible, whatever that is, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but according to them, <laughs> Roadhouse fans are all saying the same thing about the remake. Now I was oh. like, what are they saying? Mm, right? <laughs> it's one of those headlines. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out, no, they weren't saying, why did they make this? Which is what I thought it was going to be. No. <laughs> now it turns out with over 50 million views over the first two weekends since its release, the remake of the 1980 same, uh, 1987 film of the same name is the biggest movie Amazon has uh, ever produced. And I, wow! Produced quite a bit at this point, you know. It's, yes, it's still pretty I think early so. to the other streamers, but mm -hmm. it, uh, it was huge. Uh, the movie is mm. not, however, without its controversy. As you guys recall, most recently we reported that producers may may have used AI to complete the film in order to 
uh, meet a deadline that uh, would have required that they relinquish the rights of the film back to the original screenwriter. And they were like, no, we're not doing that. Bring in the Wait. robots. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, I just realized maybe Conor McGregor's AI. That <gasps> may explain a lot. That does. That would explain a lot. <laughs> now that the film is out, I've yet to, like, I saw nothing that was evidence of AI. Yeah. So I'd be curious now to hear, now that the film is out, what mm -hmm. is it that's being accused to be artificial intelligence yeah. generated? But uh, I yeah. was I wondering. Think that could be Connor. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, certainly over the top. Explains that walk where he's like, <laughs> that, that, yeah, yeah, that bulldog strut. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and in addition to the controversy, Amazon uh, caused quite a stir by reportedly reneging on their uh, agreement with the film's director Doug Liman to release it in theaters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mistake, I think. Yeah. I think so too. And if you remember at the time, Lyman was so pissed. He was said, I'm not premiering. Mm -hmm. I'm not right. attending the premiere at South by Southwest then. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He said that Amazon was, quote, using a roadhouse to sell plumbing fixtures. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, what they, that's what they do. They sell plumbing fixtures. So. Truth. I wonder... Why would they just release it to streaming? Do they think, oh, all of a sudden, all these people who don't already have Amazon Prime are going to sign up for it just to see that movie? I don't understand. You mean I'm like sure that's what they now? think. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I expect that's what they think every time they release a movie only on right. themselves. They think, well, it's going to drive membership. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's rational, but, but mm -hmm. I mean, with those yeah. numbers, that, that shows you it, it could have done okay. With a theatrical yeah. release. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would have gone. It's not, I, me too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was expecting mm -hmm. to when I first, you know, first mm -hmm. learned about it through that trailer. Yeah. Yeah. And while it's not a one to one comparison, a Twitter post by someone named Dominique Tolly Sr. pointed out how, much like John's suggesting, it could have made in theaters just doing the math. They wrote 50 million viewers. Let's say half of these had two people watching. That's 75 million people watching. At $10 a ticket, that would be $750 million. Uh, a roundabout in the box office. <laughs> well, that's that math works. Yeah, but I, I don't know that uh, yeah. necessarily yeah. Mm -hmm. 50 million viewers at home would translate to 50 million in the theaters. Right. Don't There's know. probably not a direct yeah. conversion because plenty of people watched it just because they could. Because yeah. they went to buy plumbing fixtures and saw a shirtless Jake <laughs> Gil Gyllenhaal and went, oh, might as well click play. What the hell? It's mine. It's free. Yeah, help him with cleaning out my plumbing, you know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, go back and, uh, to the bulldog you... strut part of the film i want to see that again yeah, oh yeah <laughs> he can walk me any day i, I don't know what that means <laughs> hey did, did you guys actually watch it with someone or did you watch it alone i watched it with my husband okay yep mm. I, I watched it with your husband too no i watched <laughs> it yes, me too <laughs> we might never watch a movie together again but <laughs> yeah I, I, I watched it alone myself i watched it alone you watched mm -hmm. it alone? All yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that because um, so, nobody was home or nobody wanted to watch it? Yeah. It was just a matter of practicality, really. Yeah. Yeah. I, had a, I wanted to potato, watch it in time. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, there's lots of reasons why it wouldn't necessarily translate. But even if you have that and say it only made 25 million viewers and, and sold mm -hmm. that in the theater, it's still that would still be a pretty good uh, take. Yes. Sure. Uh, right yes, right yes. now, the uh, current uh, box office leader is still Dune Part 2, which at least as of this writing is uh, was mm -hmm. leading with $627 million at the box office. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I had a yeah. sigh for a second there. Uh, yeah. Ke now, or I thought the, you were catching your breath. <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Yeah. In the <laughs> end, yeah. Lyman All did All the money made fact, it verklempt. Yes, I think so. <laughs> in the end, Doug Lyman did in fact attend the movie's premiere Regarding his uh, change of heart, Lyman said, quote, you know, it's tough to do sometimes, but you just have to acknowledge that you lost, hmm. end quote. It's as if he didn't learn anything from Elwood Dalton. Mm. <laughs> Come on, you got to stay in the fight. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder if he had some peer pressure on him. Somebody saying, oh, come oh, on, yeah. you have to yeah. be there. That's right. Uh, yeah. well, Nathan says, and with the success of this film, do, do you yeah. think that means that Amazon Prime is going to be, oh, what other 80s property can we reboot for more success? Mm. Mm. Maybe. Like, I, I would, I'd be thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? 
what I hope they would do, and maybe we've talked about this in our many reboot conversations, mm-hmm. is reboot a movie that was mediocre. Sure. Was yeah. Not it, mm-hmm. maybe or less than mediocre. Mm-hmm. That'll be great right. to see something a decent premise that's just you know uh, updated and uh, stories rewritten. Don't don't take a movie that's good already. I mean, what do you? What's to be gained right. from that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad they did this movie yeah. though, even though yes. the, the original was good. <laughs> I really like the yeah. remake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Nathan says Connor sounds like the leprechaun on The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John says Connor McGregor is AI, angry Irishman. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. That's what it was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Karen says, I wanted to watch it over the weekend, but I got roped into helping with holiday dinner cooking. Oh, oh family, am I right? Yeah. Oh, Karen's yeah. not going to have a podcast with anybody Rebel, rebel, family. rebel. Guarantee that. No, no. All call. right. Hey, another 1980s news per deadline. Kevin Smith uh, is uh, coming. Is making a comedy called The 430 Movie. It's been mm. acquired by Saban Films. Uh, mm-hmm. And got our attention because it's set in the summer of 1986. It's a coming-of-age comedy that follows three Six to see if you can relate to any part of this, right? Anybody? Okay. Okay. Here. All right. Follows three 16 year old friends played mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. people who I don't know and most of them can't pronounce <laughs> sure. their names. Kids. Sure. Who spend their Saturdays mm-hmm. sneaking into movies at the local multiplex. But <laughs> when one of the guys also invites the girl of his dreams oh. to see the latest comedy, each of the teens will learn something serious about life and love before the credits roll. First of all, I think that's a terrible log line or whatever elevator um. pitch. That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like you know when you haven't done your homework and the teacher asks you, well, "What are you writing about?" No, it's just a bunch of bullshit. It's, it's, it's just it's not really it's, it's just not specific. Like any story could be sixteen year olds rustling with you don't love, know what's really going to happen. Lesson. Yeah. They learn the lesson before the movie ends. No shit. If they don't, well, I guess if they don't, that could be something too. But. Well, okay. Oh, I, I applied it to mean before the credits of the film they snuck into role, not the film you're watching role. So oh. there's a little more detail there. No? You know what, John? It's, but but yes, you're probably right. Okay. For a couple of reasons. One, because you're you're clever, more clever than I am, and, and so you saw, oh, saw okay. it. Okay. But the other thing I think, though, is, and I'll tell you the other reason in a second, but the other thing I think, though, is they're going to have to probably be around the same time, right? I mean, otherwise, they're getting right. a shortened amount of time to learn their lessons than we are as the viewer watching them. Mm-hmm. If the credits roll mm. halfway through the movie, well, they didn't learn anything. I guess they had the third act to <laughs> learn it. I, I don't know. But it says here before the credits roll. Yeah. We just don't know which credits because there's bound to be a movie within a movie because they're watching something. Right. Yeah. Unless yes. they license other movies. So, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I assumed well, it was the yeah. credits of the movie that they were watching. That's what I was assuming. Mm. Oh, she's just jumping in now because I said that was clever of you, John. I know. Hey, clever is clever. I mean, whatever, bro. (laughs) Clever is clever, whatever. That was a good rhyme. Um, No, I thought, Will, that you, that's what, that I thought that's what you were talking about. All right, no. You guys are of average intelligence, and I'm just an idiot. That's what it comes down to. Let's face it. Thank you, thank you for not right. elevating me beyond my. Well, John, you were special until Cat joined. Now, since you're both, you both can't be special. That must be average. <laughs> now we're just average. Yeah. John, well, that's how math start, works. We need here's to start the, saying um, uh, uh, obscure scientific terms again. Deoxyribonucleic. Yeah. I'm not giving you any right. acronyms <laughs> to make me look dumb. Oh. <laughs> Uh, here's the other reason you brainiacs are probably right is that smith shot the film at his uh, smod cast cinemas in new jersey that's Mm -hmm. the same movie theater that he haunted every weekend when he was a teenager and now he co-owns that's so cool it was the theater itself that actually inspired him to make this movie in the first place he said quote the day we bought smod cast cinemas i not only reclaimed an integral piece of my childhood I also suddenly had access to a visually interesting and cost-free movie location. <laughs> so that's probably why you're right. And it's probably why I'm right too, in the sense that their credits roll when ours do, because he's like, yeah. it's free to film here. We'll make as much of it in the movie. We'll go to the lobby, something, <laughs> some backroom stuff in an office, mm-hmm. go actually mm-hmm. watch a movie. <laughs> I'm always so envious of Kevin Smith. He's another one of those people that I'm just so jealous of all the time because, Aww. uh, <laughs> well, like Patton Oswalt. I'm like, you son yeah. of a bitch. Like everything right. he does, I want to do, you know? <laughs> and Kevin Smith has had so much success and he's just the same kind of dork I am, but he's able to go back and all the things he ever wanted to do or buy or you know, like, 
It'd be like me going back. I'm going to go and buy the barrel of fun at the old Winter Haven Mall or, you know, like go back to your childhood and reclaim those, literally the locations. I'm just so mm-hmm. jealous of people that get to do that, especially yeah. people like, we're no different. We're the same kind of dorky. You're just good at being dorky and I'm not. Is it different? You're, you're <laughs> making money at it and I'm not. <laughs> better so, at being dorky. <laughs> did you guys have a, a movie theater that you haunted when you were a teenager? Yes. Ooh. I wouldn't say I haunted it exactly. I'm just <laughs> but, saying what they have. Yeah, yeah at, at the mall. It was Seaview okay. Square Mall movie theater uh, was was definitely That's a go-to regular place. spot. It was a regular spot. There was a, mm-hmm. uh, what do you call it? A second run movie theater yeah, right. mm-hmm. a couple towns yeah. away that we would occasionally go to. But it's like the, usually... the dollar movie or the mugging yeah. movie kind of things, yep. the second yeah. runs. Yeah. Yeah. Just a dollar or two. Yeah. Yeah. In my heyday of movies was really, really when I started to drive when I was 15, mm. 16, whatever that is, which is 84, mm-hmm. 85, right in that window of time. And yep. and fully half of the movie experience was cruising around the parking lot and driving <laughs> past the, because people are standing in line. Kids, mm-hmm. used to be you stood in line at the movie theater. <laughs> and so you had this captive audience of people lined mm-hmm. up on the sidewalk that you could mm-hmm. drive past with your radio playing too loud and you're, you know, yeah. hey everybody, looking cool, got my sunglasses right. on. You know, you cruise around the parking lot four or five times till you see who's there. <laughs> then you yeah. park and you go in. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, yeah, that that theater that had the long line and sidewalk, the big parking lot, that was my regular haunt. And then you go in. And, yeah. Yep. You right. remind me, John. Uh, there was a couple. Mm. There was a few theaters throughout my childhood and teenage mm-hmm. years, and you're right. Mostly when I could drive, then I had a more I had a I had a regular spot. When mm-hmm. I was younger, yeah. it was at the whim of my parents, and it really became whichever yes. theater was nicer. So we, you know, we only had a couple theaters at one point. Then they opened uh. a new theater, so we go to that theater. Then there's a multiplex. We didn't have any of those. Ooh. Now we're going Ooh. to that. <laughs> but you remind me, John, with regard to the line thing. I remember standing out in line in the 80s. I was old enough to drive because I remember I had driven me and my a couple of my friends there and actually brought a girl mm. there who was, was she the, what did he say, girl of his dreams? I guess oh. at the time maybe yeah. she was. Oh. <laughs> and we went to see the yeah. movies there and we were standing in a long line waiting to get in a theater and a guy in a like convertible. And at the time, I felt like this guy was in his 40s, like having a midlife crisis. He was probably <laughs> all of 30 or something. I don't know. Oh, but boy. he pulls up. He has a, a convertible... I want to say like a Mustang, but it could have been a, Mm -hmm. it could have been something else, but a convertible Mustang that he puts the top down. He's got like a woman with him that seems too young for him. He gets out of the car, closes the doors, and he hits, as he gets towards the line, which, because he parks close by, he hits the alarm. And the alarm is a little short clip of, uh, I think it's, I don't want to say it's Wild Thing from Tone Loke. It's like, (gasps) Oh. Was the thing when he clicked it, I was like, that is the coolest thing. I don't know how we had the, he had that technology. It was probably uh, the late 80s, 87, 88 or something. But yeah. And then suddenly he had two dates and Will had zero. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, no. yeah. I don't know that I even had that one. So, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All I'm going to go hang out with cool guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Kevin uh, Smith continues with regard to his film here. He said, so uh, with regard to having purchased the film, again, uh, the movie theater rather, that he frequented as a young person, he said, quote, I saw I started writing a personal, is it payin? Personal payin? I saw that too. I don't know that phrase. Payin? Payin sounds sure. like it's, I'll you... say it both ways and edit out the wrong one. I think sure. it's payin. <laughs> it's a, obviously like a Greek word, P-A-E-A-N. Uh, personal payin personal peeing to the past for us 70s and 80s kids yeah that's us uh-huh. the pre-information generation who grew up without the internet when romance and relationships required much more than a swipe to get started and the idea mm. of asking out someone you had a crush on was as terrifying as the looming threat of nuclear war <laughs> john's still nervous <laughs> did you have a flashback or something i did yeah <laughs> was it was it uh, to the day after or was it your first date <laughs> no, it wasn't the first date. It was a date. Okay. Yeah. Oh, not the first, yeah. but uh <laughs> the fear of rejection. Oh yeah, it's oh. real. It's real. You know, I honestly don't remember ever asking anybody on a date. I wound oh, up on wow. dates, but I don't remember how that happened. Hmm. Arranged wound dates. The yeah. parents yeah. get together. And <laughs> yes, that's wound our up. Like play dates. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Can your daughter date. come over? Who the hell is this? For what? <laughs> to play with my son? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. He needs a play partner. John says, Pi, Pi, Paian? 
Paella. I, that sounds like paella. <laughs> is that looked, really? Is that it? <laughs> I just looked it up. It said it said peon in the yeah, peon. Phonetically oh, okay, peon. peon. Oh, whatever. Yeah. One of those I said was right. <laughs> Sorry, John. I'm a peon and I'm a grinner. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember how I wound up on dates. I, mean, I know Catherine how I wound up on dates. She was like 30 years old. What was it? Go, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. The, I did go. I went on a couple of dates and they were to the movies. Actually, literally yeah. like two. Yeah. And it was mm-hmm. because I asked the, the, you know, object of my attention at the time. Mm-hmm. And oh. that was it. <laughs> it was just yeah. those two. <laughs> how do you no, not remember how you got to go on dates, Will? I know. There's so, so many, funny. John. There's so many. Just you know, Will's, Will was just such a ladies' man. There was a line. <laughs> he, just, he went out and got game. in his car and said, next. And then somebody would yes, get in. Right. And he'd mm-hmm. go to, yeah. he, he went mm-hmm. out and, and got in the golf and pulled out the, right. the boom box. It wasn't my car cat. <laughs> I did not drive the golf. Get off the golf. <laughs> Brandon says, I look forward to this Kevin Smith movie so much. He's my favorite independent filmmaker next to Richard Linklater. Ooh. Uh, Karen awesome. says, we had a really cool arcade next to our AMC, but the one I went to the most was one that opened when I was in high school. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alice says, there was a classic movie house where I grew up. They tore it down in 92. Such a sad day. They were losing Aww. too much money in the Cineplex. Yeah, yeah I know. And now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the other thing about that, uh, you know, Roadhouse that we talked about. Was, you know, you got to put these movies out there so these theaters stay open. Mm-hmm. All right, hey, another yep. 1980s news. As reported by Classic Rock, the Scorpions Hurricane was originally R-rated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so anybody, uh, children present, some bad words will be used. This is an R-rated show, not for families. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or spouses, Look, apparently. <laughs> For folks who aren't even fans of rock, you know this Scorpions song. It's, Scorpions mm-hmm. are one of the most mm-hmm. enduring rock bands. Uh, mm. In the late eight, 70s, early 80s, they had albums such as Love Drive, Animal Magnetism, and Blackout. It turned them into one of Germany's most successful musical exports. But your elevation to the music big leagues came with 1984's Love at First Sting, thanks in large part to the hit song mm. Rock You Like a Hurricane. Uh-huh. Which at the time, and probably because I'm naive, I, I didn't think anything about the song as far as what nope. the implications were, the innuendo. Mm-mm. No, anyway. I didn't get the innuendo. Well, I just it thought... had rock in it, so it was a fun <laughs> song. It's about partying. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, so... It had the word rock, and I thought mm-hmm. like, oh, they just really know how to enter a room, I guess. Damn. <laughs> they seriously rock. They're rocking like a hurricane. <laughs> yes. Living in Florida, I know how hurricanes rock, so they are serious mm. rockers. Well, you know, it makes me think now, and obviously, you know, unlike today, and we'll talk about that in a second, because uh, the, the songwriter from Scorpions who wrote the song makes a comment about this. Unlike today, songs had to be, had to imply things, had to use innuendo, how to create other lingo and jargon to get their wor- message mm-hmm. across, because otherwise mm-hmm. it wouldn't get radio play. And mm-hmm. then in the 1980s, it wouldn't be on MTV. You'd right. be dead. You're done. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it makes sense. And now it has me thinking about a bunch of other rock songs that I liked or other songs that I liked that use the word rock. Mm. Like, uh, <laughs> come on, feel the noise. Girls, rock your boys. Okay, maybe All that meant right. something else. But what right. about this? This is a, just puts a terrifying image in your, in your mind. Uh-oh. We will, we <sighs> will rock you. Run! <laughs> the whole band is coming to rock us. Oh, no. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Well, this Hurricane song could have been very different. Uh, in, in a brand new interview uh, in the latest I- issue of Classic Rock, uh, let's see, the uh, former Scorpions drummer Herman Rarebell, I'm going to say, uh, talks about the making uh, of that album, uh, Love at First Sting. He co wrote, as I mentioned, Rock You Like a Hurricane, with le- uh, the lyrics at least, with the singer uh, Klaus Main. Uh, and they revealed that they originally had something different in mind. One, to guarantee to take, the, again, take them out of contention for any radio airplay or or videos on MTV. According to Rare Bell, touring with bands like Foreigner, Aerosmith, and Journey is what taught them how to write songs. Now, the implication, and it's not said in this interview, is that <laughs> it taught them to make obscene songs? I, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Or, or, they, or to we're, lace we're, them with innuendo is kind of how I read okay. into that. Like, oh, they figured out a way to to ride the, ride the razor's edge and get the innuendo in there without losing the airplay, I think is what yeah. they were implying. Yeah, mm. I guess. I was thinking maybe the process of like cranking them out, like, you know, let's first we get the riff, then we too. get the lyric. But yeah, uh, yeah I don't uh, know. right. 
Yeah. Anyway, when guitarist Rudolf Schenker wrote the <laughs> propulsive riff for Hurricane, Rare Bell, uh, Rare Bell and Maine were, 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 it was their job to craft the lyrics to match. And while mm -hmm. Maine was the romantic uh, of the two, it was Rare Bell who came up with the uh, less than wholesome lines, such as, quote, it's early morning, the sun comes out, last night was shaking and pretty loud. That's one of his lines. And here's another, uh, quote, the bitch is hungry, she needs to tell... So give her inches and feed her well. End quote. Oh, how considerate. I do. <laughs> Maybe they're buying hot dogs by the foot? I'm trying to think of... Kielbasa. Yeah. Kielbasa. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway. And by the way, oh, according buddy. to Rare Bell, the writing these lyrics didn't require imagination because he said it was pretty much autobiographical. That was... <laughs> he, was living the, <laughs> he said he was living the rock and roll life, sex and drugs mm. and rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Big sausage aficionado. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yes. However, he admits that he overstepped the mark uh, with the title he originally wanted to use for the song because the original title was Fuck You Like a Hurricane. Now, John, you live down in Florida, as you pointed out, where they have a lot of hurricanes. You were explaining how you know a lot about hurricanes and experiencing yeah. them. It, it has already had me wondering yeah. in what way, in what distinctive mm -hmm. way would a hurricane copulate? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then there's the lead in. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, oh yeah, I, I, I see on the storm tracker you're coming in any moment now. Yeah. <laughs> gonna, mm. Oh, we expect well, Hurricane Will to lay about ten inches of rain. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. John. What category? Three, right. four. <laughs> I <laughs> expect a lot of precipitation. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Look, Will yeah. doesn't even remember how he got dates, so he's at best a tropical that's depression. Right. Yeah, that's true. No. You got it. No, that's, yeah, you got it, <laughs> But uh, according to Rare Bell, the record company looked at him and said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Here I am. Mm. Rare Bell adds, and this is what I was alluding to earlier. You okay, Cat? Title... Cat's having <laughs> I will be. Sorry. Okay. Robo notes that up. the title, while it would have been controversial in 1984, it would barely raise an eyebrow today, saying, quote, there are all these songs that go motherfucker asshole. Now you could release Fuck You Like a Hurricane and nobody would give a shit. <laughs> Wait, is, is that a song? Is there really a song? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're going to do it. If it's just, not, we're going to do it. I don't know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> if I band camp, here we come. No. Uh, <laughs> Tornadoes involved. Uh, what other? Oh, All right, hey, finally, in 1980s news, as noted by Screen Crush, <laughs> Netflix, <laughs> you got a warning. I know the hurricane's warning you, right? The right. phenomenon is warning you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, oh, like, I'd rather have that song now. I just, I, I'm stuck. I'm like, that's, I like the song already, and now oh, yeah. I like a remake. Where's you Amazon? The, Can we get that remake? You want the uh, uncensored version? <laughs> Right. I don't want the rock you like. I, yeah. I want the, yes. Mm. I want to be yeah. defiled by the hurricane is what I'd like in my new <laughs> well, version of the song. Uh, it's Karen. not aliens. It's a hurricane. Yeah, John. Pick your, Sometimes well, they hey, hide in storm clouds, he's though. Up, you know he's that. Up for whatever. Yeah, that's true. I've seen that movie. <laughs> mm. Karen says, that intro, though, that was one oh. of the, those songs that couldn't be mistaken for another song. I think she's mm -hmm. talking about, uh, mm. I don't know if she's talking about Hurricane or We Will Rock You. Oh. Uh, because either one, you get a Or perhaps she's commenting then... on Motherfucker Asshole, her favorite song. Yeah, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It's by she Huey Lewis. the new music, yes. <laughs> Huey Lewis. <laughs> Hip to be square and the B-side, yeah. Uh, uh, Marcus asks, who the hell Ooh, went to a concert? taking a turn. <laughs> who the hell went to a concert that included Journey and the Scorpions? Yeah, that was a concert. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Hey, and finally, in 1980s news, as noted by a screen crush, Netflix has added a collection of films from 1984. Thank you, Netflix. Well done. <laughs> uh, Netflix's cinematic gimmick for 2024 is what they're calling milestone movies. Oh. Hmm. You got to keep <laughs> people coming back. Anyway, films, by that they mean films that are celebrating big anniversaries this year. So mm -hmm. they've already added a collection of uh, f films that turned 50 because they were released in 1974. And this month, as of April 1st, they've uh, uploaded 20 titles that were originally released in the best year for movies, 1984. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's where it gets a little weird, though, is what movies they've uploaded. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the, technically, they're yeah. 84 movies, so <laughs> they do have an anniversary. <laughs> just, yeah. The well, selection, well, as you said, is not, and, they're not all winners. And you probably right. heard of most of these, but what's curious is that of the mm -hmm. highest grossing films, I'm talking about at least it's just the top 10, they only have two. Wow. Uh, which is a Beverly Hills Cop, for which, you know, as I mentioned, Netflix has got a sequel coming out later this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Footloose are the only two uh, top grossing films. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't include anything else that would have rounded out the top 10, Ghostbusters, Temple of Doom, Gremlins, Karate Kid, those other films. Mm -hmm. But they did include uh, that year's Academy Award winner for Best Picture, which was Amadeus, and another one of the Best Picture nominees, mm -hmm. A Passage to India. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll just, I'll just rattle off the, the, la the remaining... Uh, Remain, sure. uh, remaining films from the 20 here. Sure. Uh, 2010, The Year We Make Contact. Okay. Uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Against All Odds, Birdie, Body Double, Conan the Destroyer, Falling in Love, mm -hmm. Firestarter, Firstborn, Ooh. Iceman, Joy of Sex, Mickey and Maud, Moscow on the Hudson, Places in the Heart, Repo Man, The River, 16 Candles, Starman, and Top Secret. Hmm. Off the top of my head, I think I've heard about 55% of those films, maybe 60%. I was going to say about half of those ring a bell and half of those are like, hmm? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can imagine it's less for me. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, I think maybe I, I'd heard of about 50%, but I, <laughs> I definitely have not, have, I have not seen more than I have seen of that list. Mm -hmm. I guess I'd better you know, go. A lot of them. Log on. A lot of them remind me of walking down the video rental aisle. Mm. Even if I haven't seen those movies, I've seen the yeah. boxes of those movies. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because yeah. 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 they came out in the early 80s. They were on VHS walls. So right. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. several of you listed, I'm like, never seen that, but I've seen the box. Never seen that. But I remember going, I don't want to watch whatever that is, right? <laughs> because it sounds like something I don't care about. But familiarity, <laughs> because the way you don't get familiarity now where things are suggested by an algorithm, you saw everything back then. So I think that's, yeah. that fed my familiarity with that list more than anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. Same for me. A lot of it was rentals. And then whenever HBO was showing, you know, mm -hmm. over oh, yeah. and over again. Yeah. yeah. When you got the HBO magazine that on the front of it, what's new this oh, month little, and you start booklet, going yeah. through. Yeah. The little <laughs> HBO book. Yeah. <laughs> we only got that for a short period of time because I think at some point we were like, uh, not bootlegging. What's the equivalent of pirating, I guess? Mm, we yeah, had some kind of yeah. shady thing, an antenna <laughs> that picked up HBO, because we didn't have somebody that. Probably, really somebody sold your dad a decoder box, one of those hacked okay. decoder boxes. Yeah. Oh. But it had like an antenna on it. Oh, did it? Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, we had to have on the roof, because we, we okay. didn't have cable in our city, I don't think. Or certainly didn't have a Did you have a satellite? Did you have a little satellite? No. Oh, no, I, it was oh even, really? It wasn't that. It, it looked like something out of a sci-fi movie, like from the 1930s or 40s, like Flash Gordon. It was like a pipe with differently shaped mm -hmm. metal rings on it, yep, I think. Yep. And it was probably th mm. three feet long <laughs> on our roof. Anyway. Sounds like a probe. I think it probably was pulling down satellite <laughs> signals, a thing like that. Yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. so. Yes, wow. maybe from the mother, the big satellite that was feeding some other city that mm -hmm. had it. I don't know. Maybe. Right. Regional. Yep, I think so. Anyway, we had <laughs> HBO. So we didn't get the booklet. Because we're Lucky stealing you. it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Michael says uh, Val Kilmer's first movie was uh, Top Secret. That's right. And in fact, uh -huh. Val Kilmer was the youngest. I don't know if it's true anymore, but at the time, certainly he was the youngest person to be accepted and attend Juilliard. And I think uh, that he yeah. left Juilliard without graduating so that he could star in that film. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. hmm. Darth says, what about The Last Starfighter? Well, it certainly came out in 1984, but it's not on Netflix, I suppose. Yeah, it would be great if it mm, were. That uh, would be great. And Marty McFly, looks like it says, uh, most of those are Cat's Never Ending Watch List. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you are not Cat, wrong. I'll, just, I'll send you this, Cat. <laughs> You're not wrong, Marty. <laughs> All right. Hey, that was 1980s news. Take a drink of water here. Mm, I'm going to do the same. Might as well. <laughs> Delicious. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, hey, so let's talk about it. Uh, look, we, yeah, thank you, John. <laughs> now I'm thirsty for that. Oh. Sorry. Mm. Right. <laughs> uh, your butt's back in here. Uh. Um, <laughs> yeah, hey, we've been teasing it uh, for the first half of the episode. Let's talk about films from 1984. Now, look, I'm, I'm not going to bury really? the lead here. Uh, for years, just anecdotally, by my own intuition, by having lived <laughs> through that year, 
And having mm -hmm. seen a lot of movies in the theater, because gratefully my family at the time went, and gratefully I was old enough at this point to just take a couple of buses to get to the movie theater, and I would, mm -hmm. which now blows my mind, because my kid is now around the age I was, and it's like, yeah. I can't imagine them doing anything like that, taking a <laughs> couple of buses a few cities over, yeah. like 15, like 10 miles maybe away, and, and not even telling my parents. <laughs> Didn't you one time run across like a six lane highway? You had to, to run across the highway there? the first time, yeah. Kat. That's true. <laughs> See, that's the Generation X curse. We were latchkey kids that were feral and ran free, and we have overcompensated <laughs> to become these helicopter parents that didn't mm -hmm. give that freedom to our kids because we know what we did when we were free. <laughs> right. You know? so right. We definitely overdid. We uh, swung the pendulum way too far back. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're right. I've probably said to her a number of times, tell me where you are and where you go. If you go somewhere else, <laughs> tell me that. Mm -hmm. So you're right. My parents never said that. They didn't know where we were. I just showed up no. back at dinner time, and they were like, "Hey, yeah, eat." I, I told you. I, I think we talked about. It. Mine would just be home by ten. If you're not call and tell us why you're not going to be home by ten. Otherwise, yeah, I could be wherever. Yeah. Now, That's amazing. what if neither of those happened? Was it there? We'll call the police. Uh, oh, if, if the neither of those happened, I just shouldn't yeah. go home. Yeah, right. Oh. That's what I was thinking. Just stay out. Oh. Yeah. Just, just be locked. Just, it, that, that becomes a place I used to live. I'm just not going back there. So I never <laughs> failed to either show up or call and say, yeah. No, I see John walking by his house when he's a kid. His parents won't let him back in. He's just kind of sad walking by, looks at right. them and they're like. Oh, they'd let me in, but there'd be an ass whipping no. because I didn't follow no. through. So, yeah. so yeah, you, well deserved, I should on, say. Then, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Hey, guys. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> All right. So look. So, uh, yeah, it's, it was anecdotal, right? So uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to prove this, though, you know, mm. because I don't want to have these arguments like Darth here, who's listing the best films from 1989. Oh, and the thing for me is, look, <laughs> here, here's the thing for me that it came down to, because like Darth is now, and I, I appreciate that he's doing this. Maybe we'll mention some of these here. He's, yeah. he's working on a top 10 here in the comments uh, films from 1989. You could get 10 good movies, top 10 out of any year. The thing that I was thinking yes. in my mind with 1984 is you could keep going deep. Like you can get into the back benchers. I think that's a sports phrase. <laughs> and they're still good. Is it? I don't know. Is yeah. it? All right. Um, maybe it has something to do with So hurricane. I've been told. I, I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> Here I but am. That, and so I, look, so to, to mathematically prove this or not, I did a couple of things. This is not going to take Ooh. very long. So what I did was first I downloaded, I downloaded, I found this resource for nerds, which is perfect for me. It's this <laughs> place where just fellow n data detectives upload data that they've scraped from the internet. And once someone had uploaded 15,000 films from Rotten Tomatoes wow, uh, that included their audience scores and had the years, the names of the movies, had a bunch of data with regard to these films. So I looked at that. Huh. Hmm. Mm -hmm. My first theory was, look, I just got to co uh, compare the top 100 films from 1984 and any other year and the average audience score for the 100 films will be higher than any other year. Okay. Again, because my theory being that more movies in 1984 were regarded by audiences as higher than any other year. Right? Okay. Again, top mm -hmm. 10, that's easy. Mm -hmm. Top okay. 10's easy. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Anyway, so I, 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 pick a, I picked a couple of different random years to do this, and they were essentially the same. They both, uh, all the years I compared rounded out about 60%. So that didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> So, <laughs> so he had to find a, a new metric to measure that aligned with his beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. I was, yeah. was going to keep going until I found it. You know that, yes. So, So here's my other thought. I thought, well, average might not work because if you have uh, a few really high ones and a bunch of low ones, there's a lot of ways you could arrive at an average of 60 that wouldn't necessarily represent the fact that more movies had a higher rating in the 80s. Because maybe you had like mm -hmm. 75 or 60 and then the last – you know, 25 or 20 or 13, to bring down the whatever, average dramatically. Something, right. Know, right. Obviously that mm -hmm. less than 60. Yep. So the other thing I thought was, well, let me just count the number of films that have a 65% or higher. And I bet you mm -hmm. 1984 has more than any other year. Oh. Again, I picked some random years in 1984, this time lost to the other years. <laughs> oh, so, no. so far, <laughs> oh, no. statistically, I'm unable to <laughs> prove this. Mm. What uh -oh. I'm left with is just my anecdotal experience. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. There are a lot of admire. variable factors in though, Will, because mm -hmm. like versus how many films were released because, you know, what's the percentage that are above 65 versus the number that are above 65. There's always a way to massage the numbers. 
All right. I got to get <laughs> with you, John, on this because we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna write. A, we're gonna publish a white paper on this. We're gonna find a definitive. Yeah, that's right. There's gonna be massaging of spreadsheets. It's just woo. <laughs> Here amazing. I am. <laughs> yeah. Watch out. John's got a massage Excel spreadsheet. Like a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. He's got a slide rule and an abacus. Mm. Run, run. Mm. I just sharpened the pencil in my compass. Mm. Look out. That's so, a fine line. Uh, so I, okay, well, what order should we do this here? I guess, look, I guess we'll do this first, right? Well, I know I'll just ask you guys. So I gave, look, we posted on, on Facebook a short time ago. I think it was the top, it was top 30 because that's all we could fit on the screen at the time. Oh, there you uh, go. Films from 1984 and, and, and asked people how many they had seen and different people, obviously folks weighed and there was quite a range. With very few people seeing, they had seen none or a short, a small number of them. And most folks, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, 50% or higher with uh, not infrequently people seeing they'd seen them all. Mm -hmm. I think out of that mm. list in particular, I myself had seen all but 28 or, or all but two rather. Wow. All but two. Wow. Oh yeah, I think my. So. Wow. That's I was just about 30, to say people though. that said yeah. they'd seen them all are liars. And I only <laughs> say that because <laughs> what? when I looked at the list that we're talking about, yeah. There's such a spectrum of films that yeah. do not overlap interest. You would have to have mm -hmm. such an eclectic taste in films Good to have point. actually seen them all, unless you were intentionally trying to just see all the films. You know, like, <laughs> I want to see the AFI Top 100, regardless mm -hmm. of whether I want to or not. Someone, like, doing that for 84. Because I look through the list, I'm like, I don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. Not because it's not a good film, it just doesn't, it doesn't align with the things I'm interested in. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that makes perfect mm -hmm. sense, yeah. So I gave you guys a longer list with 50. So I'm curious out of the mm -hmm. 50, the top 50 that came out in 1984, how much, how many of those did you, you all see? <laughs> <laughs> now it's not a competition cat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, I saw 15, I think. Okay. Uh, and one mm, or two okay. of them, I'm looking at right. and thought, I think I must have seen that. I'm gonna count yeah. it. <laughs> I must have seen oh, okay. it. Odds are, I must have. odds are, yeah. Like Cannonball it's been Run on cable. Too. I had to have seen yeah, that. I thought you had seen it. Yeah, I had oh to yeah. Have. yeah, yeah, you have to. <laughs> all right, Cass got fifteen. All right, fifteen. Fifteen. Mm. I came up with. Uh, I went through the list and I actually added one more today. That I'm like, oh crap! I do remember that movie. So oh, I'm yeah. at thirty-one. Oh, oh that's wow. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you okay. can double thirty-one. <laughs> and the ones that aren't on the list are like. Nye. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple on there's like how could you have never seen blah 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 and i'm like I just don't care you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> not because uh, i think I, it's bad right. i saw about 40 out of the 50 as far as what i count okay um, wow that does not I agree. the 10 that i didn't see were movies that i'm never gonna watch hmm. yeah i just don't care right i'm like curious terminator. to hear Will's never gonna watch terminator <laughs> hey hey now <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yeah, got it's... time travel and robots and nothing yeah, in Will's oh, interest yeah, group. Nothing, yeah. I want to hear the movies that Will did not watch. Oh, you really? Ooh. Have That'll be illustrative. I, I don't know that yeah. it's, uh, is it really? <laughs> That's good radio. <laughs> Will, list me 20 movies you hate. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do that. If you want, we'll just all be incredulous. Me, You've not seen that. It's, it's it cannot end well. So just don't do it. <laughs> okay. And likewise, I asked you guys for your top five of the fifty mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what those are, and, and in and in uh, in a moment, I want to see how they stack up with the actual top five uh, that oh. by box mm. office. Mm -hmm. I predict my top five John? are the top five. Me okay. first. Yeah. So yeah, first. in no particular order. In no yep. particular order. Mm -hmm. uh, the Terminator. Yeah. Okay. Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. The Karate Kid. Mm -hmm. Temple of Doom. And mm -hmm. The Search for Spock. That was my wow, five. That was really? my five. The Search for Spock. Okay. In, wow. All right. In no right. particular order. Yeah. yeah, I gotcha. All right. I think four of those were on the top 10. Just uh, yeah. Terminators mm -hmm. wasn't. Terminators level. Okay. Down. Travesty. <laughs> Kat, what do you got? Okay, also in no particular order. Mm -hmm. Footloose, mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. Romancing the Stone. Oh, that's a good yeah. Really? Yeah, the, yeah, I loved that movie. The Karate Kid and yeah. The Muppets Take Manhattan. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a spoiler. <laughs> yeah. 
that might have been like my sixth or seventh. It's it's right up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and all of you, well, all but one of yours was also in the top uh, top ten there. Mm-hmm. Ah, um, all right. So, Will, you're in top five? Lay on us. Because I have another yeah. observation I'd like to... Yeah. 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 In mine, are, mine almost track exactly with the top five. Uh, mm-hmm. Beverly Hills Cop, Ghostbusters, Temple of Doom, The Karate Kid, and my uh, outlier is The Last Starfighter, which is surprisingly <gasps> at 31. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Great film. So, I think... the three of us... Sorry, John. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, you go. I think when I picked my top five, it wasn't based on... Which of these movies do I think are the best movies? Mm-hmm. But which of these movies do I most do I remember most fondly or most resonate mm-hmm. with me even still today? Yeah. Uh, many, many, many great films in there, but they aren't like I don't still keep watching them over and over and over that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Or they haven't I haven't followed all the sequels, or I haven't continued mm. to love it. You know, like *Romancing the Stone*, fun, but yeah. I don't like go back and watch it regularly, kind of thing. And I don't, there's no mm-hmm. sequels to follow up on, so it's kind of faded in my memory. So. Mm-hmm. Did you have similar criteria? How did you, or I'm curious. For both of us? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I picked, yeah, like my favorites out of the ones I had mm. seen. It was um, either sentimental or I just, sure. th- the ones that I remember when I saw them back then, actually. I mean, I wasn't even connecting it to now. It was ah. when I saw them back then, that was yeah, I love yeah. this. How well did that memory in the theater stick with you still to today? So yeah, it, you know. absolutely. And now yeah. the Muppets well, similar... one. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, it's okay. The Muppets one. I ended up watching that a whole lot with my daughter. Later, she fell oh, in love with it right okay. away. Sure. So that has an yep. extra layer, but it was already it's Muppets. Bonus. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We did that with the Great Muppet Caper. Became one we watched oh. a few times with our kids. Mm-hmm. Nice. I, yeah. I didn't, uh, John. You know, I think. The ones I picked wound up, wind up meeting your criteria of rewatchability, but I hadn't considered mm-hmm. that. It was just my favorites among the, the mm-hmm. 50. Okay. But, I, I, John, now I'm wishing we had that metric because I bet you if how many times have you seen this film mm, per person? That's, that's per a average, different list. <laughs> that would be 1984, <laughs> hands down. Uh, and again, mm. we're talking about going deeper into the list go. beyond Maybe the that's the yeah. way to justify 84 is the best. Like, Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, the most yeah, rewatchable yeah. films. There you go. That might yeah. be the angle we needed. Yeah. That's a good we point. We might have to do a survey to get our own data. And, and like I said, beyond yeah. top 10, because look, you know, Darth did put his his list here, and it is a good list here. Bat- this is 1989, yeah. and it does stack up. But we're talking about the first 10 films. That's easy. Batman, mm-hmm. Ghostbusters 2, Back to the Future 2, uh, Star Trek 5, Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. Last Crusade, The Abyss, Major League, Naked Gun, Weekend Dead Bernie's. I think we're missing one. But those mm-hmm. were all great films. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But how deep can you yeah. go and still have a really good film? And I think that's where 1984 is different. Mm-hmm. Uh, 82 mm-hmm. might give 84 a run for its money, though, because that's uh, pretty deep as well. Yeah. Uh, I noticed we film. all had two movies in common, I think. All three of us had Ghostbusters. Oh, and did all three of us also Doom have? And Karate Kid. Right? All I didn't three, have I Temple of Doom because it wasn't oh, like no? super okay. special at the time. Karate okay. Kid. Did gotcha. we all have Karate Kid and Ghostbusters? I think so. I, yeah, I did. Certainly. I, yeah. yeah, I had those two mm-hmm. as well. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's funny. <laughs> uh, Karen asked, uh, "Last Starfighter is familiar. Didn't you guys cover that on Gen X, Grown Up? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We just had That's his fortieth anniversary. We did right. an episode yeah. all about it. Yeah, yep. yeah. So it's fresh in my mind. I mm-hmm. probably hadn't seen it in thirty years, and then finally rewatched it. I'm like, why have I not rewatched oh. this in thirty years? <laughs> I love that movie so much. Uh, Nathan says, I think we'll interview the stars too. That's right. Yeah, I interviewed yeah. Catherine Mary Stewart twice. Yeah, and we got." <laughs> And I got Lance Guest uh, to join yeah. her uh, on a live mm-hmm. uh, thing that we did too. Yeah. They they hardly mm-hmm. ever. I don't know that they've ever done an interview together. They've appeared at some cons together, but that's also rare. So I was really particularly mm-hmm. honored to be able to do that. Yeah, that was um, fun. All right, there you go. Pretty all big right, hey, I'm really disappointed, Cat. That oh. uh, mm-hmm. uh, I guess I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed in the sense that you've only seen 15 out of the 50. Mm-hmm. In the sense that I- I'm judging you. I'm disappointed in the sense because that might mean that. <laughs> John may just run away with this because once again it's time to play. <laughs> oh no! I ain't falling for no banana in my tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going to be playing that game here. John's going to run. Based away. solely on 1984 movies. This might actually be, you know, fairly. I'm going to be You're rocked like a hurricane body. here. <laughs> here, cat is. It may work out evenly anyway. Okay, here's how we're going to play. And I'm going to give you two sample questions. And folks, in the, I'm going to give you this opportunity too, okay? 
much like in some other g- TV game shows, I'm going to give you a chance to get a lifeline from the comments once per the oh. game. Okay, so in one time in the game, mm. you can go to the comments mm. and see what nice. folks are right. chiming in as. So I have the comments uh, closed now. All right, so yeah. I'm... So oh, uh, I should close and, them now. And if you want to keep them closed, I can tell you what folks are saying as a consensus. Uh, Mm-hmm. Read all the oh, answers. Well, if I'm cheating, I'm cheating. I'm opening the comments when it's time. <laughs> all right, well that's fine. You'll have time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you two sample questions here, just so everyone can get to understand how we're gonna do this, because there's an opportunity to get one or two points, uh, and it's not nearly as complicated as it sounds. This is what I'm gonna ask you. So it turns out, uh, just as I alluded to earlier, that there are uh, more than one, more than two. I found at least a dozen, but there's certainly more. I'm guessing stars that appeared in two films in 1984. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is give you a movie that they starred in, and it's the movie that was ranked highest among uh, the audience score in Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. I'm going to give you a clue regarding to the second one that didn't do as well. Okay. If you can give me the actor and the movie, you'll get two points. If you can only give me mm-hmm. one of those, your opponent will get a chance to steal both of those points by naming the other thing you missed. Uh, wow. If your opponent can't do it, then you'll get the one point. All right, so here's an example, just so we could uh, understand it. We could play this one. Everyone could play this one. I'll play along with okay. us here. Here's well, the first mm-hmm. one. The Terminator came out in mm-hmm. 1984. We just mentioned one of John's okay. favorite films. Mm-hmm. Here, it'd be, here is the clue for this uh, t- you know sample question here. And again, so what I'm looking for is the actor that connects these two movies. Uh-huh. And the other movie that was not regarded as, didn't do as well, according to audiences, at least. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's the clue. This epic sword and sor- sorcery film was the sequel to the 1982 film that made its lead a movie star. John, you got an answer? <laughs> uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Conan the Destroyer? That's right. Oh, nice. Awesome. I get it. That's exactly right. That was the last one I'm going to know, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how often do we get to phone a friend? Or <laughs> Just once per game, Cat. Oh. Well, here's another example, oh, Kat. See if you can get in on this one. Oh. This is just oh. a test one. This is just a practice one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Splash. Darn. This might be the only one I did, get. Uh, <laughs> Splash was, uh, I think, I threw my list away. Wasn't it in the top 10? Okay. Top 10. I've got my list on my computer somewhere. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can tell you guys if you want to know. It's up there. <laughs> um, I love this movie. The uh, so okay, so the other movie is this film follows a soon to be married character who is the guest of honor at a night of drinking and debauchery. Um, Mm. Uh, John's gonna take it, John's gonna get it. Uh, uh, (laughs) go ahead, John. I think Marcus is guessing before I even give the clues. What he's just not doing it. Is it a bachelor party, Tom Hanks? That's right. Wow, I was I was okay. just joking that John. I was should have just taken a stab. That's that's the last one I'm going to do. All right, that's okay, the that's last it. one, and that's true because the rest of them were hard. I kept the easy ones up front. All okay. right, here we go. Once again, it's time to play as a. I follow for no banana in my tailpipe. <laughs> I should give you a point for naming what that movie came. What movie that came from? <clears throat> Is it from Beverly Hills Cop? Uh, that's right. You got it. All right. I'll Yay. Point then, you know, if you didn't know, I would take a point away, but you didn't. Know. Oh. All right. Hey, here is the first real question. Let's see. Folks in the chat are getting this. Get, got those ones right. Marcus, like I said, mentioned Bachelor Party. Nathan, Bachelor Party. Al, Tom Hanks, Bachelor Party. And so on and mm-hmm. so forth. A lot of smart folks. So look, you're going to have a chance to turn to these uh, people here. Once per game, if you can't get an answer right. The first one, I've, I've, I decided uh, before the game here, uh, did a random thing. And John is going to go first. Oh, no. <laughs> so, Kat, do I'm not glad I did well here. in the sample questions to make up for how poorly yeah. I'll do in the actual game. Oh, you're going to be fine. Here you go, ready. <laughs> Look, the first one is Ghostbusters. Ooh. And here's okay. your clue with regard to the other film and actor. Columbia Pictures agreed to make this drama that follows an ambulance driver in World War I in exchange for its star to also star in Ghostbusters. Hmm. Ambulance driver in World War One. See, I told you I wouldn't get any more of them. <laughs> Sounds like something I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. If you give me the actor, you get one point, but Kat will get a chance to steal with the movie. If she can't steal, you'll get just the one point at least. 
Well, yeah, I folks I mean, in I'm the chat supposed... are guessing here. Are they getting it? Yeah. Well, they're Columbia Pictures, and so if you if you're if you're vying for stars around the time of Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess that it's Bill Murray. But I can't imagine because I, I can imagine him in a film, the ambulance film. But I don't know for sure. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. That's right. Bill Murray is the okay. actor. Wow, right, nice. Kat, do you know the film? I nope. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> All right, so John gets the one point, and the other, the movie we were looking for is Razor's Edge. The Razor's oh. Edge. Never seen it. There we go. There we go. So yeah, Bill, Mar Bill <laughs> Murray wasn't going to be in Ghostbusters, so uh, no. part of the deal to get him to do it was the, the Columbia had to agree to make this smaller film that he was anxious to to star in. Hmm. That huh. he also actually wrote. It was based on a, a book by the same name. Wow. I never yeah, thought of Bill Murray as an indie darling who was doing little films because he wanted to do them. I just yeah. always thought of him right. as a SNL comedian doing big, big hits, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, although it's ranked 98 as far as box office, it, uh, it has a high audience score on Rotten Tomatoes of 72. Oh, it was right. Murray's first dramatic role. All right, Kat, this is your right. turn here, your chance to get uh, uh, on the board. <laughs> your the film that you're going to be looking to connect to is... Star. Mm. <laughs> Crap, cat. Oh, cat. Oh, cat. <laughs> cat, listen, cat. If you and really this is listen, the better well, known film. This is the better one, cat. This is the this better is the, known. This is the well. This is the one that did better according to audience, or scored better with okay. audiences. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cat, listen to this clue. I have confidence okay. in you. Be, I'm, I'm closing my eyes. Okay. And I'm just listening. Okay. Here's the clue for the second film, and you're gonna if you can get that, and also think of what actor. Is in both, you'll get two points. Okay. Although this romantic thriller did not receive any awards, Phil Collins was nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Song. Oh, song, against all which odds. Which shares its name with the movie. What was that? Against all odds. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> okay. That, do okay. you know which actor appeared in both? Ah, criminy. Um that was one of those movies I wasn't sure I had seen or not. I just, mm -hmm. of course, knew the song. <laughs> mm. I cannot think of who was in the movie. So, <sighs> All right, John, you have a chance nope. to steal two points. I don't think I've seen either, so Kat gets her point. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for Thanks, Jeff John. Bridges. Jeff Bridges uh, was the star okay. of Starman okay. in Against okay. All Odds. Okay. Yeah. Folks in the chat like, I got, might have uh, seen. Hmm. Yeah. I might have seen a little bit of Starman on HBO accidentally, but never on purpose. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> never on purpose. No, okay. uh, I never sought it out. Oh, Nathan got Razor's Edge. Uh, Murray, you um, nice. Go Nathan. Marcus got Jeff Bridges against all odds. Al got against wow. all odds. Mark got uh, Jeff Bridges. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Karen. That's where the that's this where the Phil Collins song comes from. Yes, she was written, was written for that. Yeah. All right, back to John. Here you go. This is our third uh, okay. film here from 1984 that, uh, John, we're going to look for you to connect it to. It's The Last Starfighter. We just talked about this movie. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, another film that came out in 1984 also starred the same actor. And here's your clue mm. for that film. Hopefully, this will get you there. Hmm. Huh. Shit, this is uh -oh. wrong. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 there we go. I just, I just have my finger in the wrong spot. Here we go. <laughs> in this sci-fi comedy horror, the passing of a once in a 65 million years celestial body hmm. turns most of the Earth's inhabitants into dust or zombies. Okay. This is for John. Mm -hmm. I, so far, no one in the chat has guessed. I'm trying to find a connection. There are so few actors in The Last Starfighter mm -hmm. who did much else. <laughs> yes. Okay. There are a few, but uh -huh. so few of them. And the one I can think of that was the most prolific, uh, I, I can't pull his name out of the air. So mm -hmm. I, I'm sad, but I got nothing. I got nothing. Cat. Mm -hmm. It's all yours, Cat. Two Those points two. up for grabs. Um. Well... And is only Comet get, only, in the name of the movie? <laughs> if you only get one of them, no points for anybody. This is your only chance, chance to steal now is you get them both. Oh, all right. Um, nah, I, I got nothing. <laughs> I really have nothing. 
is it before you reveal the answer yeah is it the gentleman who the older gentleman who starfighter was his last film that's the only guy i can think was in lots of other films that could easily have been in another film in the 80s but the guy who plays greek the alien right no oh oh, you mean uh, oh oh, robert uh, preston yes robert preston the the guy who drove the car and picked him up right 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 no it's not that's a that's a good guess no this person okay. who also started a 1984 film was Catherine Mary Stewart. She appeared in Night of the Comet. Oh, oh did she? Good for favorite. her. Yes. Huh, you know what? Good for her. Yeah. I actually knew that from hearing you talk about it. I know. But it was just mm, too far I back. That. <laughs> too far back. You got back. Comet. Seen you Night got of the Comet. comet so there I you got go. Comet. <laughs> you had Comet there. I did you say uh, Comet? I thought she said, is there a comma in the title? Oh. I misunderstood her. Or maybe she had said, is there a comment? She wanted to go to the comments for her. What's the, phone what's the punctuation? Yeah. Uh, Nathan said, Night of the Comet. Michael Good Creamer job. said, mm. or Michael says, uh, Will Wheaton. I don't know what that was about. Hmm. Um, he was in Last Starfighter. Oh, I get the joke. Oh. <laughs> well, he was cut okay. from that. I thought he was cut from that from the film. I guess you could but see he's still in the background. You still see yeah, him. He's, yeah, he's, he's yeah. barely there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this one Still tied goes. Cat. So we got that. Yeah, there you go. One to one. <laughs> Pulling big right numbers there. here, big scores. One to one. Mm-hmm. Still have the chance to steal, uh, or okay. rather, you still have a chance to phone a friend in the con- in the form of the comments. Oh, John, this one goes to you. Your film is Gremlins. Oh. Uh, just, just, just Wait, that's point of right. order. Didn't I just yeah. miss the last one to pass it to Cat, and she didn't get it? I think uh, I think Cat has first go on this one. I could be wrong. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I, I see yeah. what I'm doing wrong here. I, I, you know what? I got. I got to get. Rid Make of sure this. I don't uh, steal. I scribbled. I, I'm just screwing myself up with this thing. Hang on. You yeah, don't steal my thunder. You you're already I got, I might be like a hurricane. I need so. a new code system here. Here, hang on. I got to redo this. Ooh, okay. All right. All right. I won't explain it. It's not worth it. Okay, cat. This is your. This okay. is your turn here, cat. All right. So we're looking. The 1984 film you have here in front of you is Gremlins. That's the first one that scored uh, best with audiences. I'm looking for you to connect it to the second film that didn't do as well by mm-hmm. an actor, but also uh, premiered in 1984. Here's your clue. While it is billed as the last film in the long-running horror franchise, hmm. it is only the fourth in the series that has spawned 12 movies. Oh. Mm. Um, mm. Hmm. Okay. Billed as the last, turns out to have mm. only been the fourth. There were 12 of these movies. Uh, um, Got some guesses in the comments here. Uh, well, I could take a stab or I could ask yeah. a friend. I think you, I'm going to ask could? a friend. Oh, okay. All right, Kat. There you go. Yeah. All right, Kat, you want to peek at the comments or let me just tell you what they say? Um, I, I want to peek at the comments. Okay. All right. Oh. Yeah. She they're wants to check and see whose here. advice she's taking based on how much she believes their uh, yeah. authority. So for folks who don't know, the comments here... Marcus says Feldman, uh, Friday the 13th. Nathan, Friday the 13th. Um, okay, well, Owl, but Friday it has to be the specific Friday the 13th movie. I guess the fourth mm-hmm. Friday the 13th movie. Right. Okay, well, okay. To that Will's end, clue yeah. was a giveaway. Will's clue was a real kind of... Yeah. <laughs> they gave it away. And I see the name Corey Feldman yes, multiple okay. times. Yeah. And yep. I remember him from Gremlins, so that's got to be it. <laughs> Corey that's... Feldman and Friday the 13th, the fourth one. That's what you're going Yes. All right, yes. All right, we'll just give it to you. Here you go. <laughs> Is it the final chapter? Yes, Corey there we go. Feldman, that's what I thought the final yeah. chapter. Yeah. She even had the word. He had, had final right into the clue. And I'm like, oh, he's giving it away. No. Sorry. Yeah, and someone, someone actually... Oh. Uh, Wrote it in the comments. All right, turn Could your you comments off. Have stolen off, that from me? Oh you're yeah, done. you're done. Um, okay. eh. you're, two you're two done points for Cat. Well done. Yes. All right, so it's currently <laughs> three to one. John, here is your uh, clue for your next yes. uh, move, um, uh, next oh. tiny whatever. Oh uh, no, what call this game whatever. All right, John. <laughs> yes. Your film, your A film. Let's call it the A film. Is Streets oh. of Fire. Mm-hmm. That's the, the good B one. movie. Okay. Uh, is uh, described as the following. This sci-fi film is loosely based upon a since-debunked urban legend regarding the disappearance of a Navy destroyer, the USS Eldridge. (laughs) 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 Well, I've never seen Streets of Fire. Okay. I couldn't tell you who's in it, but I have a film, so I guess I do the partial credit. Uh, The film's The Final Destination. Is that, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Is it the final countdown? Shit. Oh. Something like that. The good news oh. is they're both no, wrong. No, what's it? 
<laughs> okay. Good well, good. 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 I, I didn't lose on technicality then. <laughs> nope. No technicality. <laughs> Kat, do you have a guess as to either? We'll give you one point if you cool. get either of them. What the hell is that uh, called? Uh, uh, all I know is um, a song from Streets of Fire. <laughs> That's okay. All I got. If you sing it for me, I'll give you no points. <laughs> oh. I don't want to hear it. I do not want to hear it. All right. Neither of you know. John, this Damn, is a movie that called? involved time travel. Looking for the know, Philadelphia experiment. The Philadelphia experiment. experiment. Damn it. Oh, Which is, oh uh, you did know that then. Okay. I had Old final stuck Michael in my head. Perret. From... Oh. Oh, of course, yeah, uh, Michael so. Perret also uh, was played a student in The Greatest American Hero. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We got guests in your final chapter. Pony. Last chapter. Philadelphia the experiment. H? We got a final countdown here. Chad, Chad says final countdown. Okay. Troy says Mark Sheen, the final countdown. Thing. I don't remember that one. All right, Kat, here you go. I guess I wasn't too far is... off base. That's something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, other people far. thought it too. All right, Kat, here you go. Okay. Your Ooh. film, your A film is Beverly Hills Cop. Mm -hmm. And the clue okay. your B film I'm is <laughs> this film follows two characters along different timelines who are only connected by a tank. Hmm. Actor or a movie? Either one gets you a point. Oh man! I... <laughs> oh, John looks like he's ready uh -oh. to steal. He's he's starting to stab. He's ah. <laughs> uh, if you get one, if John gets stabbing. the other. He'll get both points. Your roadhouse stabbing. I you stab away, John, because I don't have a stab at this. I got nothing. <laughs> All right, John, you got an answer here. I, I have an answer, but it's, okay. it's it. it my wrongness proves I'm not cheating is what I really appreciate about this. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that comes to mind is Eddie Murphy best defense. That's right. Whoa, you got mm. it. Now, I don't, you don't can't steal two points in that way. So you only got one point. Oh, that's the way I'm playing. Oh, that's my rules. Oh, because she didn't get one in the first place. So it's not available yeah. to steal. Is that okay? Oh, yes. Whatever, oh. whatever keeps cat in the lead. I'm good with. There you go. All right. Great. I'm on the same page. John. <laughs> uh, Marcus says he cheated. Best defense, Eddie Murphy. He cheated. Uh, who <laughs> cheated? Who? John? Marcus Eddie cheated? Murphy? No, I didn't cheat. John is saying he cheated by knowing. No, Marcus I cheated is by working, knowing. <laughs> Marcus is working on a potential true, quote unquote, true crime regarding the best defense. It's an interesting oh, story. Awesome. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, that we hope to bring you or not, but we probably will somehow. <laughs> All right, here you go. Here is the next one. This one is for uh, John. Yep. John. Ooh. Ooh. Your A film Ready. is The Terminator. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, didn't we see this one already? Mm, interesting. Mm. Interesting. Here's your B film. This slasher film was adapted from Stephen King's 1977 short story of the same name that featured an agricultural based demon. Okay. Hmm. Right? So, even the movie and the actor that is in both. You get two points. If you get one or the other, you get one, but Cat has a chance to steal both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I, I mean, it's not Schwarzenegger. So, <laughs> so I don't know an actor, but I'm going to guess the film is Children of the Corn. Okay. And you're not going to try on the actor? I don't know who the actor is. No. You lose nothing by trying to guess the actor. <laughs> Uh, still have your one point. Um, I'm drawing a blank on names right now, which is ridiculous. Um, all right, the movie I want to say the guy that played Kyle Reese. So you have one, one, one guy uh, played Kyle Reese. That's my my guess. Okay, you've got <laughs> <laughs> you've got one. You need the actual actor name. Cat. One for you now. Know who one the actor now. is? I nope. <laughs> no. All right. We were looking for Sorry. Children of the Corn. You're absolutely right, but it was Linda Hamilton who appears. Oh, in Linda Hamilton. Oh, John, you get your one point, making it a tie now, three to three. Woo! Yes. Ooh, and I still this have is... a phone a friend. Yes, yeah, John, you do. <laughs> and you're only going to get one more question, John, because you got Cat's going to go. You're going to no. go, and then Cat will. Well, I bet I phone a friend so. on it. <laughs> yeah, that's how you play. I bet he's, that was his strategy, right? All right, Kat, here think... you go. Here's your A movie from 1984. It is <gasps> The Muppets Take Manhattan. No! Oh, my gosh! <laughs> Why can't this be gear? the movie? Yes. All right, now, Kat. Yes. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a help here in this regard. But okay. since you've seen it so many times, you probably don't need any help at all. 
Well, there's a lot of people in that movie. There's a lot. That's okay. the problem. That's the there's a lot of people. Me. And I'm not great at remembering actors' names. That's one of my big oh, downfalls here. Oh, oh you got I'm this, Kat. Yeah. You got it. Oh, All right, okay. just give me the movie then. Here you go. Here's your clue for the B movie. The movie that okay. didn't uh, rank as uh, well among audiences, although probably okay. still scored pretty high. Hmm. While many of the characters are fictional, a real-life Harlem hotspot is at the center of the story. Movie and or actor are both for two points. A real-life Harlem hotspot is at the center of the movie. Yow! That's my sound for hotspot. <laughs> it sounds like James Brown. Um... Hotspot like a hurricane. <laughs> yeah. I... Oh, some folks in the comments know. are getting right I... there. Mm, I don't know. All right, Kat, you don't, don't know. know. It's clear you don't know. John, yeah. you want to mm. tell me either one of those for one point? Uh, the only film I can think of is Harlem Nights, but that's, oh. I don't think it's 84, honestly. So, you're, you're, no, I don't know. Right. That's later, right. Okay. Yeah. We were looking for Gregory Hines, who appears in both oh. Muppet mm. Takes Manhattan and The Cotton Club. Oh, gotcha. The Cotton wow. Club. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nathan got it oh. right. Michael got it right. Al got awesome. it right. Uh, you guys all rock. T A Kasky, Kasky. Hmm. Not hmm. sure what to say there. I don't know. Uh, so here's the thing, Cat. Yeah. Since we're tied, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna phone the friend. I'm I'm gonna either win, lose, or tie on my own knowledge. I'm not gonna phone. The friend. All right. Now I'm just gonna give you the points for that one because you're being too chivalrous. You get two points. <laughs> now you're in the lead, five three. Well deserved. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't expect you to do that, John. <laughs> All right, John, but here you, you go. Here's your here's your final question for well, John. And the cats get one more after this. Your final okay. movie, your A movie, is The Karate Kid. Okay. You want to phone a friend for this one, John. Mm -hmm. Connect this <laughs> no, movie with the... <laughs> connect this... It is fair. It's exactly how the game is played. I used mine. <laughs> I used mine, John. You can use yours. It's time. <laughs> Unless you really don't want to. <laughs> okay, I, I have a twist on the phone a friend. We'll get to in a second. So you'll right, give it to Cat. I know you'll let Cat phone a friend. No, 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 no. Okay, no, I, I have a solution. All right, okay. here you go. Here is the clue to connect uh, the Karate Kid to another film that also starred this one of the actors, the same one of the same okay. actors. Mm -hmm. Okay, this dark comedy follows the students and faculty of a high school in the inner city of Columbus, Ohio. Hmm. Okay, hmm. I don't know. Here's my twist. Okay. Yeah. I'm not looking at the chat. Yeah. I would like to pick a specific friend. Okay. And whatever cool. they say, even if it's an outlier, I'm going to go okay. with it. Okay. All right. Okay. You All want right. to tell me and I'll, I'll look? Is that what you mean? Or are you going to? If Michael Creamer is still in the chat, whatever okay. he right. says, I'm going to go with his answer. Okay. Okay. Let's so, see. Michael, I'm counting huh. on you, buddy. If you're oh, not right. there, Michael, I'm out of luck. <laughs> he's here. He's already put in a guest, too. <laughs> oh. Michael says Elizabeth Shue, the Babysitter's Club. You want to go with that one? You, you go, go with, with it. One. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That I that's what I said. I'm living by it. That's wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. do you know either? Bo both to wrong. Steal? Yeah. Okay. Both wrong. All right. Um. Good job, Mike. Good guess. Uh, no problem. Can I hear it again? <laughs> this dark comedy follows the students and faculty of a high school in the inner city of Columbus, Ohio. Hmm. I don't think anybody in the chat's gotten it right. I and well, see, nobody in the chat's no cheating chance. either. I mean, anybody could look yeah. it up and know within yeah, a minute, know, right? So uh, they're that, playing yeah. properly. I love that. Right. Okay. What a yes, great, and, what a great. They audience. are rocking it like hurricanes, and so and I am not. Uh, Here they am. <laughs> um, I don't know, Kat. You're kind of rocking this game up if you take my meaning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I take your meaning. <laughs> I got nothing. Nope, nope, nope. All right, we are looking for. No one's got it in the comments yet. Still. You know what? You know what? You know what surprised me about you guys in this game? You didn't What's just that? guess the name of like the star of the movie, ever. But, like if you had said that... Ralph Macchio, you would have gotten a point. Oh, we're looking mm -hmm. for Ralph Macchio in Teachers, the movie Teachers, Teachers. which yeah. also stars Nick it. Nolte yeah. and a bunch of other folks movie. you would recognize. Well, it's mostly Will because we don't trust you. We knew you would give us some obscure <laughs> actor. <laughs> every no wait, every you single did. person is a, is a well known actor on this. I, well, yes. yeah, yeah. I've, that's almost, true. That's true. Almost in, in hindsight, had we known better. Okay, here we go. Look, this is the final question, Cat. Now you could—it's still tied three to three. 
So you could crush John <laughs> so with weird. five points. Okay. Or you can mm-hmm. only get one point and give John a chance to steal both points, and then John uh-huh. would win. Okay. Uh-huh. Or you can get neither right, and John can get one of them and get four points and still win. There's lots mm-hmm. of opportunities for either of you still to win. I just said something that's completely obvious. Here's the final There's... question, Kat. Oh. The movie's breaking. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here's your clue. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. The third in a martial arts trilogy, this film includes elements popular in other 1980s movies, including aerobics and exorcism. I just realized I should have said exercise and exorcism. Damn it. That would have been great. Oh, you just said it. <laughs> yeah. um, this this is the Ninja 3 movie. The, the, okay. um, the uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Oh no. oh no it's, it's going do- sideways the domination or the whatever Did you see what the, pl- the plane took off and then you're like oh go- <laughs> hi bye honey we'll see when you get <laughs> final destination final countdown it's one of those yes cat it not- is ninja three the domination you're not listening to you mister you did that to me before oh, so you got one point uh-huh. can you get the name of the actor that ties them both two points you'll absolutely Ooh. win unquestionably Listen to so. Vicky. That's right! I just got lucky Very good, on this. Cat. All right, so you you loaded that one up, didn't you? To three. There you go. <laughs> well done, Cat. Congratulations. John, go. John, that was, this was sheer, 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 sheer luck. If you'd chosen anything else, I would That's... not have gotten it. <laughs> and I, I predicted it. The two test questions, I crushed. I absolutely yeah. just. Of yeah. course. And then I just. I. I rocked up from there on. Yeah. You're a rock up. Hey, uh, let's see who got it right. Uh, Nathan got Ninja 3. Marcus says Kelly, whatever her name is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, I wish I know what to call you here. Uh, Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo. No, that's a, that's a good guess, though. Um, mm-hmm. And some other folks said some other things. There were no ninjas in the, in uh, the second Breaking, though. No, that's true. Yeah. that's true. No, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. There you go. Hey, that was yes, our brief. Yes. That was our brief. Hey, there's a lot more things, a lot more things that can hey. be said about films from 1984, and we're going to say them throughout the rest of the year because we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of so many good films, and Ooh. we're going to be celebrating uh, some of the uh, songs and albums that came out this year as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that over the next uh, several months until mm-hmm. December 31st. All right. Partying like it's 1984's 40th anniversary, which it is. All right. Meanwhile, that was our show. <laughs> and our show is brought to you thanks in part to our early adopters, Karen Flieger and oh. Rick Parker. Yeah, all right. Hey, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. And thank you especially to our secret of our success level Patreon supporters, Tony Great, Nick Guillory, Craig Coletta, Matt Marino, John Henderson, Brandon Greer, and Marcus Taylor. Yes. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so very much, guys, from the bottom of our yeah. heart. We thoroughly appreciate your financial and moral support. If you'd like to join those oh. folks and the others that uh, help us keep the lights on every week, uh, visit patreon.com slash 1980s now. That's the name of our show. 1980s now. <laughs> see how you can chuck Is any it? buck or two. <laughs> it might be not. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's show I'm listening to already. Um, hey, or if you can't do that, you could just uh, send us a comment, send us an email, make a share a post on Facebook, tell folks about our mm-hmm. show. Yeah. That would be the that would be. That's, I mean, that's fantastic. That's worth it. That's worth. That's ideal. Something too. Absolutely. Uh, including uh, feedback like we got here from Bill, who wrote, who writes us saying, "Quote: I truly enjoy your show and haven't missed an episode in months. Ooh, that's a well-oiled oh. machine you guys have over there." Oh wow, yeah! So well, oil oh, machine. That's one of the best need to comment we can on the get. lube. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see. John's got a probing thing. He's got a yeah. hurricane situation. You guys have thing. outstanding lubrication, is what I heard there. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's like the best compliment I think we could get. It seems like it's equivalent to me to him saying, yeah. "Hey, it seems like a real show." Mm-hmm. Well, you guys seem like a real show. <laughs> seems like gotcha. a real show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fooled you. It's a long con. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, we will talk about some more fascinating aspects of 1980 pop, 1980s pop culture when we talk to you next time on 1980s Now. Until next time. 
Here I am. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> Listen to see. Also rock considered, let's like get the rock out of here. But I, oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't use the R-rated version of whatever. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That was a show. Where's Michael Creamer? You're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Michael was doing so well prior to that. that he apologized. He said, sorry, John. He did. He did. Totally yeah. unnecessary. No problem. That was yeah, a I hard just, I wanted to sort of keep it, I'm just going to keep it, you know, keep it light. Keep it fun. <laughs> John, I mm. I appreciate that you, you were, uh, um, what were you doing there? You were, um, what was what did Will say? Being chivalrous or <laughs> but, mm -hmm. It would have been totally fine for you to uh, call in right. well, all the big guns. What would happen, it would have put the pressure, because we were tied, and it would have put the pressure yeah. if I had gone to the group and gotten a, a gimme, mm -hmm. you you were in a do or die situation. What I hoped is that, I was like, okay, if it stays tied, then Kat has to earn it. And you did, and you totally won. And it was outstanding. So, Aww. <laughs> well, but, I got a gimme too, though. I guess if I had gotten as far as I had, you know, and, and you hadn't, uh, yeah. you know, if I, without uh -huh. help, that would have been one thing, but I had a gimme. I, mm. I knew nothing about that one <laughs> like that I got points okay. for. Yep. Oh, yep. Michael says, maybe I like cat. I want better. partial credit for the test questions. <laughs> yeah. Michael likes yeah, me better. Wait, what? Doing, yeah. yeah, I think after John. Uh, Is that it? He sabotaged well, you. So, so uh -oh. maybe Michael was like, I want cat to win. Let me go find a random person oh, in a random movie. Oh, yes. That's what he's saying. That's right. Oh, man. <laughs> Mark says, thanks, guys. Late here in the UK, but worth it. Thanks, Mark. Surely oh, appreciate when you join uh, us. Pip, pip, cheerio Hello. to you. Thanks for staying up with us. Hello in the UK. <laughs> I love it over there. Oh, will you send me some of this tea? I ran out. <laughs> <laughs> Retro Dolls said, thanks, guys. That was fun. And then a few minutes later, oops, oh. meant to be an exclamation point. <laughs> That's funny. that was that's what I was saying. This is fun. Maybe. Yeah. I, well, I, I Maybe. did literally say, I guess that was a show. I mean, I don't, you I, didn't say that. I thought you were drifting on that a little. <laughs> to, to, to the best of your knowledge, that was a show. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's so many movies in '84. Look, I, I'm wondering this. Yes, I, I think among our our the crowd, our group here, you know, John wants to show off his a popcorn. He's toy showing off his show it trap. Off popcorn bucket. It's, oh, can homemade. you really call it a popcorn so bucket, great. John, if it's never going to taste popcorn? Well, I could I could open this and put a little popcorn in there if I wanted to. A kernel? A, yes. yes. He'll put it's a napkin unpopped. in. It's He's gonna put No, no. I, I push, the, <laughs> <laughs> it's all the burnt ones go in there. I picture him putting a napkin down and yeah, one kernel. That's it. one popped kernel. <laughs> unbuttered. <laughs> oh, there cannot be any any uh, lube involved in this popcorn. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, that's the right. Well oiled Michael. machine does not go in the ghost trap. <laughs> no. Michael likes me better too because we're birthday buddies. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, happy birthday, buddy. Oh, birthday buddies. Are we the same oh. age too? Do you know, John? Hmm. Um I'm sure you're older than anyone I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not your youngest. You friend. might you might be a bit a bit older. Yeah. A bit older than Michael. <laughs> um because he's younger than me. Yeah, okay. and you're, yeah, and you're to you, a year so. or two younger than me. So, yeah, I, yeah. It, it's close. I'm two mm -hmm. years, yeah, yeah. about <laughs> or less than. Uh, Michael wants to know where your dune bucket is, and Marty McFly says lube mm -hmm. is for the dune bucket. <laughs> 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 That's that you get the popcorn. You want topping? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, keep the topping coming. Keep the topping coming. Do you really want me to show you my dune bucket? I don't think you do. Did you get the dune bucket? Dune bucket. <laughs> John, you really want to see it? Get the dune bucket. Goes. That thing is horrifying to me. I want to see it. I want to have so many questions about how it feels. Like, does it is it pointy? Is it? Can you put your hand in it? You're supposed to put your hand in it, right, to yeah. get the popcorn out. Um, well, I, ideally, yeah, that's one way to get the popcorn out. Yeah, um, I, I did not get one. My uh, my co-host okay. Mo did get one as a huge Doom okay. fan, though. Yeah, he did. Oh. So. I, I wasn't sure I would. I w was responsible enough to own a Dune bucket, so I didn't get one. This sounds like a hurricane situation, John. Are you going to rock the <laughs> no dune bucket? No self-control. <laughs> John's going to be yes. singing, here I am, rocking here the I dune. Here I am, <laughs> rock me like a sandworm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. 
Mm-hmm. Am I the? I think I'm probably the only one of uh, among us here, and those uh-huh. those still alive with us that's seen the movie Teachers. Right? That's probably a safe I, assumption. I have not seen that. Should I add it I to my teachers. list? I don't know Teachers. No, 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 don't see it. Should not. I only it. saw it as a kid because uh, Ralph Macchio was in it. You know, Ralph I guess Macchio. I probably mm-hmm. liked Nick Nolte also. Mm-hmm. Um, but my parents at that age dictated a lot of the movies that we saw. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. We, did, we did go to the theater a lot because my dad loves movies. He still loves movies, although he doesn't go to the theater because he hates people more than he loves movies. Oh. But he has a, he has a setup <laughs> in his house, you know, where he watches. But that's so why I wanted to see it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You, you didn't ask me. I set it up for you to ask me because I had a story. So oh, okay. this is bonus do content again. for people do watching the live only. Here we go. Yeah. Oh. No, so oh, oh. Early on. I had mentioned I actually added a movie that I realized I'd seen that I'd forgotten. Blah, 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 right. So oh. I had to go. You're like, what movie was that, John? Well, nah, don't care. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> Nobody cares. Good night, everyone. <laughs> oh, I suddenly want to hear will. this. <laughs> <laughs> Deserved. <laughs> so in college, mm-hmm. um, my longtime long time best friend like a brother that i went to college with i was we were roommates for a year in college we known each other forever mm-hmm. march band march drum court uh his, his name is jason mm-hmm. uh he uh he had a girlfriend and uh, well, well he was trying to have a girlfriend and he met this girl and so they were said why don't you come over to my place and do you have a buddy because i have a roommate and then you know we kind of double date watch a movie at my house mm-hmm. and uh apartment whatever and so we went over and mm-hmm. uh and the roommate and I really didn't hit it off. We were just, yeah, okay, you're you, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we started watching Yentl. Oh, oh no, not no. date movie material. Huh. But then uh, yeah. my buddy and his date, well, they disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. so here I am in an apartment I've never been in with a girl you I don't care about and don't like watching Yentl. Yeah. So, Oh, that's awful. I don't have fond memories of it or good memories oh, of it because I was very uncomfortable. You know, I'm like, are they done soon? Is he going to come back? I mean, what's, yeah. So it was, mm-hmm. I, I saw it, ish. Ish. <laughs> yeah. You were preoccupied with when this is done. I was very done. uncomfortable. Yes. It, it was the least comfortable film probably I've ever seen. Not because of the film itself. Just, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, was, right. I, I think like now as an adult, if you were in that situation, you'd probably say, hey, we can turn this off. Like, I'm not interested in watching this. Are you? Right, Let's change right, it. Let's right. put something else on. But yeah, or I I'd have like the, paralysis as a, as yeah, a young person. I'd, I'd have done the elephant yeah. in the room. I'd be like, hey, they appear to be rocking. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Right. Unless, uh, no? Okay, I'm going to go. I was on a date like that once when I was in yeah. high school, I think it was. Uh, mm. Similar situation. A friend of mine really liked this girl, and uh, she had a friend, attractive mm-hmm. girl. And um, so he asked me to go out on a double date them and we did mm-hmm. but i was such a shy person <laughs> nathan mm-hmm. that you know they disappeared just they said john and we were watching we watched mtv or something like that and mm-hmm. uh-huh. yeah, mm-hmm. it was just so mm-hmm. awkward mm-hmm. i'm sure i felt like i was in love yeah. with her by the end of it though <laughs> i fell in love easily <laughs> close enough there's i got that date he just hung around long enough watching a movie i, I thought i thought nathan wrote popcorn can you now? hear me popcorn Popcorn, can you hear me? No, oh, you wrote Papa, can you hear me? Yeah. Papa, can you hear me? Oh. He's in the military. He just got Jason, promoted to Can Colonel. you hear me? <laughs> Would you wrap it up in there? <laughs> Alrighty. That it? Got enough chatting? Uh, That's a show. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think All right. So. Hey guys, thanks mm. for hanging out. We thoroughly appreciate it. We will see you next time. Seriously, you, please help. You, come back. I mean, help. Come thank on back. You, everyone. <laughs> you next week. Please, please help please. us. Please come back. <laughs> please <laughs> revisit this well-oiled machine, won't you? Please. Yeah, that whole moral support thing. It's true. <laughs> it is true. All right, guys. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. 